Tennessee 52, Alabama 49. Now, let's start off with this. Cheers to Tennessee for being able to uh, <laughs> double O'Neill. I'll have to finish watching after church. Yeah, this is this is the college football Sunday service, but uh, but I totally understand you going and doing your thing. Uh, if if you're Alabama, you know that you have to kick that field goal with no time left on the clock, right? Like that's the the situation that they got themselves into. And I understand that the advantage was to pass the football at the end of the game. Like I get that. Good morning, Zone Six jumps in. Uh, we, you threw three straight passes that were all incomplete, which left plenty of time on the clock for Tennessee to be able to drive down the field and kick that field goal. Now, obviously, there were other things in the game that led to that specific point. But what I'm saying is, you knew at the very end there, you were probably if you didn't get any more yardage, you were going to have to. Um, you were going to have to find a way to run the rest of that clock down. They did a good job early of doing that, of letting the clock run. But at the very end, they did not run off enough time. Now, here's the reason why you don't run off enough time, right? It's it's the fact that your defense can't stop anybody. Like, they could not stop Tennessee. Ugh, just unbelievable. Like, uh, Jalen Hyatt and what he did against that defense, it, it, nobody could stop him. He was absolutely unstoppable all day. Let's uh, let's go on and pull up the stats here. Uh, we'll pull it up on the screen so that you can actually see what we're talking about. Uh, box score here, Jalen Hyatt, uh, da, 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 six receptions for 207 yards and five touchdowns. What? I mean, are, are we serious? Like, it, it's multiple, like, 50, 60, 70 yarders. Uh, the, the Alabama secondary had no answer for him. As far as the others go, Hendon Hooker, 21 out of 30, uh, five touchdowns, all of them to Hyatt. He did have the one interception, his first in 260 attempts, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, 385 yards, not bad. Bryce Young on the other side, 35 out of 52, 455 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, he did carry the ball four times, quote-unquote, for negative four yards. Um but you look at this, and I mean, it's just, you see all the different guys that caught passes. It was just all over the place. And yet, you still had Alabama players that dropped passes. Specifically, Jameer Gibbs, towards the end of the game, had one that just hit him right in the hands that was supposed to be basically a, uh, effectively a run. And it just bounced off of his hands. I mean, it's it just weird stuff. There was one that uh, I believe Treshawn Holden dropped early on. Uh, just mistake after mistake after mistake. Uh, let's look at the actual numbers here, and I'll pull up a uh, game on paper so that you can see, you know, how this thing shifted. And you look at the win probability, you look at the expected points, Alabama started off horribly. And that's where this game actually got twisted, right? You always knew that Alabama was going to be able to throw on that volunteer secondary. Uh, what we didn't realize was the fact that at some point, uh you had to be able to get a stop, right? And, and yes, they got stops in a couple of spots. But when they did, they did not take advantage, right? They did get a stop in the first half, and Tennessee punched the ball. And, of course, the fumble on the punt, which was technically a fair catch that the Alabama player, uh, whoever it was, number 34, uh, thought that the Alabama player had touched it. And went over to try and recover it and was hit from behind immediately, fumbles the ball, Tennessee recovers, short field, bang, bang, touchdown. Uh, Anthony jumps in, hey, Gary, big fan over in England. Enjoy all the stuff you do. What a great weekend of college ball. Yes. Hey, I appreciate you being in England watching this thing. <laughs> I appreciate it. So, for sure, uh, yes, a great day of ball. Let's go through the stats here. Um, so, Tennessee won yards per play, 8.1 to 6.9. By the way, uh, they were the first team in over a decade to average over eight yards per play against the Nick Saban defense. Just nuts. Um, third downs, Tennessee won 50 to 46 percent. Uh, Tennessee won rushing 182 to 114. Alabama won yards. Now the rushing stat might have had a little bit to do with the fact that Alabama was down 21 to seven and they were down 28 to 10 early in that game. So you had to pass to come back. So it kind of shifts the the script a little bit, right? Um, 
Zone six. Gibbs is a monster even with that huge draw. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, Gibbs, it, he's he's a big reason why they were even in the ball game. Uh, Alabama did win total yardage, 569 to 567. They ran 13 more plays, 83 to 70. Uh they, Alabama actually won the turnover battle, like 2-1, to one, which is yeah, kind of nuts. Uh, Tennessee also had two fourth down failures, so that was something. Um, Alabama won drive points, which makes sense because Tennessee had so many short fields, right? Alabama was helped by that late fumble return where it, you, you could tell that Tennessee was starting to press just a little bit. Like, they had to start thinking about it because they had gotten down 35 to... Uh, 34, and it was it was a tighter game than they had anticipated. Uh, you look at this, uh, the biggest thing here was the penalties for Alabama, and it started immediately. I'm talking just as quick as this thing started. The first kickoff, you get holding calls. There was a drive in the first half. It, it was in the first quarter where Alabama had four penalties, that dropped them all the way back inside their own, like, two-yard line. It, it shifts the field position. It gives Tennessee an edge up. It was just bonkers. Um, and it, it's something that you do not typically see from a Nick Saban team. And that's, that's what was really interesting to watch is how flustered this team got. And they do it all the time on the road. Right, it, it appears to happen frequently. They they had 15 penalties against Texas. They had 17 against Tennessee today. In 2019, uh, back a few years ago, they had 13 against Auburn. Those are the top three as far as penalties are concerned in the Nick Saban era. Uh, just nuts. This is the most points that has been scored against Alabama since 1907. Sawani actually scored 54 points in that game. 52 is a bonkers number especially without going to overtime like that's I, I can't even figure out what uh what the situation was um so yeah lots of penalties against Alabama um and there were some against Tennessee as well I mean there's one that actually kept a drive going for Alabama so yes it was pretty balanced as far as the penalties were concerned you know you look at these Jace McClellan uh, only got three carries uh, he did have a he did have three catches in this game. Uh, there were numerous opportunities uh, for this team for Alabama to win this game, and they just made mistake after mistake after mistake after uh, basically after uh, getting this game back to being within a reasonable distance. Right, it, it was a close game, and they did not make the plays to win the game. So uh, the field goal it, it did remind me of nineteen ninety. When Alabama, excuse me, Tennessee missed a field goal in 1990 with Johnny Majors, and Alabama blocked it and was able to bat it back far enough, and they recovered it to where they could attempt a, a game-winning field goal. So they won that one nine to six. Tennessee was ranked number three in the country at that point. Alabama already had three losses on the season, so that was a it was it was a bit of uh, I'm not going to say karmic, um, but it did make you think back. Like this is the exact opposite of that, you know. Uh, Alabama beating Georgia in 2017 was much the same way that Georgia beat Alabama in 2007. Like, it's just a, time is a circle, right? Uh, you look at the stats on the sheet. We could spend, I'm telling you, we could spend an hour on this game alone, so we're not going to do that. But you look at the the page that's actually on your screen right now, and the green is good, the purple is bad. Explosive play rate, neither team had a big explosive play rate, which is bonkers when you think about it. Uh, but Tennessee didn't have explosive plays that like drove them down the field. They had explosive plays that scored, and that's the biggest difference. Uh, Alabama seven percent explosive, Tennessee six percent defensive run stop rate or run stuff rate. Alabama eight percent, Tennessee seventeen percent havoc rate. Tennessee four percent, Alabama seven percent. The defenses did nothing, uh, and Alabama's third down success rate was putrid. Thirty eight percent success rate on third down. Tennessee sixty two percent. This was uh, two offenses that just went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Like they, it, once once the game settled down, they could not stop each other. That just bottom line. You look at the game drive here, uh, the play by play. Uh, you you will see. So Tennessee scored. Uh, let's see on every drive 
other than the uh, end of the half and the one where they turned it over on downs towards the end of the first half. In the second half, uh, they turned it over on downs early, even though they had already driven the ball uh, over into Alabama territory. Uh, Alabama came back, tied the game. Tennessee scored in three plays. Alabama came back, 12 plays, 75 yards. Tennessee throws an interception, and then Alabama does not take advantage of it. Right? Alabama had taken the lead, and they did not take advantage of the turnover from Hendon Hooker. It was the first in 260 attempts. It was just crazy. So then Tennessee comes back out, three plays, 94 yards, touchdown. I mean, explosive play again. Um, let's see, it was Jalen. Where are we? 78 yard pass for, uh, to Jalen Hyatt. Yep. So that's, it. I mean, it was just touchdown, touchdown, fumble return, touchdown, touchdown, missed field goal, and the game winning field goal. So props to Tennessee. That was an incredible, incredible scene. Uh, they have been waiting on that for a just, it feels like a billion years, but 15 years, long time in a rivalry for you to not get a win. And I know that Michigan knows about this, and any win that you can get is a good win. Uh, this is one where you got to figure out what it is that Alabama is, right? It, is Alabama a good team? Are they just completely flawed? We know that they've got good players. I think it says a lot about the team that they were able to come back in this. I think it says a lot about Tennessee that they were able to take a shot late in this and still came out with the win, right? They they got a lot of advantages in the first half. A lot of things went their way. When they started going the opposite way in the second half, they still found a way to draw up those plays, hit those explosives, and come out with a win. Uh, this would be a fantastic CFP rematch. It would be a fantastic SEC title game rematch. We'll see what happens from that. But cheers to Tennessee. Got this thing done. Uh, the fact that it actually happened at home, I think, was a monstrous deal. I can't wait to see what the TV ratings are. That's what I can't wait for. Thanks for listening to Winning Cures Everything. Make sure and subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. And make sure to leave a nice five-star review. You can follow Gary on Twitter, at GaryWCE. And the show is at Winning Cures. Be sure to check out the merch in our web store and share the show.